30 years ago, yesterday, this absolutely essential thrash album was released. Sepultura, Arise, absolute game changer. And we're going to celebrate this by looking at my favourite thrash albums of all time from the 80s and 90s. Good evening, Simon here, Explosive Action, and we are, as I just said, going to be talking about thrash metal today. In the background, we are listening to Mentally Defiled. This is a Greek thrash band from 2009. They put this album out. Fantastic, ripping modern thrash. Um, it, you can hear it. It's, you know, it's like Havoc and all of those modern bands, but I far, far prefer, prefer this over bands like Havoc. So amazing. We're going to be listening to this in the background. And what we're going to be doing is going through my favorite thrash album. So this is just my list. Um, it's quite the list. I started at 10 and just thought, no, we're not going to do 10. We're not going to do 20. We're going to go through the ones that I am always comfortable putting on that always make me feel happy. Thrash albums for me, thrash in general, is something that I listen to, usually depending on the weather. Like death metal, it's when it's cold. Black metal is when it's raining. Thrash metal for me is usually when it's a little bit warmer. I open up the windows, I let the air come through, and I blast a thrash album. And I was doing that today. These are some of my absolute favorites, and they're all from the 80s, from the start of thrash through to the 90s. I have nothing that I would consider modern besides what we're listening to in the background. So let's take a look at them. We're gonna whip through these as quick as possible because there's so many of them. First one is Abomination, self-titled US band. This came out in 1990. It's bordering on death metal, but it is pure thrash. The vocals are in hinge, it's just smashing out, shrieked stuff. So good, absolutely love this one. Love the cover art as well, Abomination. Next one we've got is Artillery. This one is uh, Terror Squad. How good is that cartoony artwork on there? This is the second album from Artillery. I would very much like the third one, but it's very hard to find. Um, but for now, this is my favorite Artillery. Um, absolute power driver everything. I'm not gonna say for every album this is a thrash classic because that's why we're looking at these things. They're all thrash, they're all classics. So, Artillery. Next one we've got is Assassin, uh, the upcoming terror. Anything with a tank on it like this is gonna be tip top. Look at this, take a focus of this guy. He's telling you what you're gonna hear. You're gonna hear some angry damn thrash out of this one. Tank, I said, tank on the cover. Next one, this one's one of those ones that I only found sort of in the last couple of years and it went straight to the top of being awesome. Atrophy, uh, socialized hate, this is, um, it's kind of Metallica-ish, late, later sort of, you know, Master of Puppets era kind of Metallica, I suppose. Um, I love the cover on this one too, with the, the Jester. Very, very cool thrash, and um, yeah, I reckon kind of underrated. Good stuff from Road Racer. Road Racer had a lot of good thrash back in the day. Here's another cool one, Blessed Death. This is, um, reminding myself, this Destined for Extinction. Um, this one I only also got about two years ago, but um, the real heavy sound in this is sort of a mid-paced thrash kind of thing. Really, really grew on me very quickly. There's the guys, denim jeans afoot. Awesome stuff from Blessed Death. This one, when I was when I got it, I was so happy because I've been listening to it for years. Blood Feast, uh, Kill for Pleasure, just barbaric. The vocals on this are fantastic. Look at the. Look at that blue skull. It'll just tell you everything you need from Thrash. Fantastic. Super, super heavy stuff. Absolutely love it. Blood Feast. Um, there's an EP after this that's just as good as well. Uh, it's called The Face. Um, but hey, I'm going to go for albums. Blood Feast. Kill for pleasure. Everybody knows this one. Dark Angel. Darkness descends. Love the um, sort of grave thing going on there. Um, this is a early Gene Hoagland band, I'm sure everybody knows that. Uh, the opening track has got a double kick pattern that you would then hear in Metallica's one. Lots of discussions about, um, was that borrowed, and uh, even another discussion I heard recently that Gene actually performed that double kick pattern for Lars when they recorded one because he simply couldn't do it. Don't know how much truth there is to that story, but it's a fun one anyway. Dark Angel. Death. Angel, gotta have two angels. This took me a while to get. Very hard to find this one, the Ultra Violence. Um, it's 
kind of ripping in that same Dark Angel kind of way almost. Um, I, I almost, in, in my early days, got them confused a little bit. Um, two different angels, both starting with D. But yeah, classic stuff. Should get uh, more reissues because it just seemingly is quite hard to find. But yeah, very happy that I did get it. The Ultra Violence. These guys are awesome. Germany, I think. Death Row, uh, Raging Steel. This is their second album. Um, the first one, uh, Riders of... I can't remember what it's called. Um, it's got two different names and I haven't got it, which is very unfortunate. This is the Death Row that I'm most familiar with and the one that I always play. Um, it's, yeah, top shelf, top shelf thrash. I don't think Death Row get talked about as much as they should either. It's a bit of a common theme, a lot of these thrash bands. I think their time was then and people don't talk too much about them now. Here's another one that I don't see talk too much about, uh, Death Wish, uh, Demon Preacher. Uh, these guys are a British band. Um, their first album was very muddy, um, sort of mid-paced thrash. They, is. they just made it angrier on this one. Super, super good stuff. There's the guys there. Uh, another early Road Racer. Love the Road Racer stuff. This one I talked about in my last update, and I have played it about six times, so it's instantly gone in the favourites list, and I knew it would. Deborah Stroll uh, with Neuropatologa, uh, Czech Republic band. So much fun, straight ahead thrash. That cover, that cover, amazing stuff. Um, and just young kids absolutely having a go, mixing together all of their favourite bands at the time. Um, obviously influenced from all the German bands and a bit of Sepultura is what I heard as well. So Deborah Stroll, great stuff. Still going apparently. This one's awesome, uh, Defiance, uh, Void, Terra, Firma, this is their second album. Their first album's better known, has the uh, Ed Repka artwork and was on, uh, on Roadrunner. Um, but uh, the vocals on that are a little bit rubbish uh, and the, I don't know, it's just a little bit middling, Doesn't it's not that brilliant. This one, vocals are much better and the songs are just better. I think it's uh, actually a really, really good album and joins my love. Also on Road Racer. Awesome, love the art. Everyone knows this one. Bask in this, Demolition Hammer, Tortured Existence. I don't have the other uh, Demolition Hammer. Um, some wonderful, I think this was Scott, yeah, Scott Burns production on this. I loved his production. I know some people didn't like it, but uh, to me, Scott Burns just defined that late 80s, early 90s sound. If you heard his production, it was gonna be a good band. Demolition Hammer. No exception to that rule. Fantastic, bordering on Death Thrash. It's just so supremely heavy. Fantastic, 44 caliber brain surgery indeed. Everybody knows this, everybody in their mother knows this. Destruction, Infernal, Overkill. Second album uh, from this monumental German thrash band. Um, just, look, it's got uh, Tormentor on it, which is pretty much my favorite Destruction song, so therefore, the best destruction album for me. Amazing. Uh, man, I've had the CD for this for years and um, this is one of the few reissues I'm showing here. Everything else is pretty much OG, but Devastation, Idolatry, more of that Scott Burns sound. Double kicks in this is so fierce. Um, it never gets super fast. It's sort of that mid, just teasing on being faster, um, but it's a powerhouse of an album. Their album before it's good, the one before that, their first album is trash, but this is their third album, Idolatry, essential stuff. Definitely um, pick it up. This reissue is very cool too with the way it slides in and out. This is one that uh, my friend Extra the Mutilator put me onto. Um, he said, you should check this band out. I listened to it, I thought that's pretty cool. I literally found it in a shop the next day, which has become a bit of a running gag for us. Dream, death, journey into mystery. It took me a little while to come around to it, but when I did it, then I just, just kept playing it and playing it. Um, so more of that sort of mid-paced, chunky thrash. Um, totally cool, totally awesome stuff. Look at that blue denim. Just, ah, man, this is so good. Uh, digging that artwork as well. Fantastic. Dream Death. Another one that Extra put me onto, Exorcist Nightmare Theatre. This is the US Exorcist. There's a... Um, I think they might be Portuguese. I can't remember the other one, but I've got them too. Um, so this was a, um, I've just completely forgotten, an unofficial sort of side project of another band. I've forgotten, I'll put down there who they were from. 
Um, same members allegedly. Uh, it's anonymous, but anyway, horror themed thrash, um, and it's kind of wild. It's it's a lot of fun, and it is kind of that spook. It's called Exorcist, so it's got that horror spooky thing going on there, which I wouldn't think many people were doing at that time. This might have been the first band to do that kind of thing. Um, then you know, Necrophagia then coming along. Awesome stuff. It's just good fun thrash um, with a horror edge to it. Exorcist. Another ripper classic, Exuma, Possessed by Fire. I um, I only really like this first Exuma. I listened to the second one recently, um, just online, and it really didn't do too much for me at all, but this one is a belter. Uh, for me, this is Exuma. This is the Exuma that you need. Possessed by Fire. Um, just uh, aggressive, aggressive stuff. Fantastic, I love it. Flotsam and Jetsam. This is Doomsday, the, Rece the Deceiver. Um, this um, is famous for um, this guy. Retroactively, Jason Newstead, who then went on to Metallica. That's the story everybody knows. But here he is just playing bass as usual. Bass is quite up front, which is good. Um, far better than when he went on to Injustice for All and you couldn't hear a thing. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of similar to Metallica's style, actually. Um, maybe that's why sort of join them it's less fierce it's um you, you would all know flotsam but i think it's a, a very creative sounding band um very enjoyable love that cheesy cover as well so yeah there you go flotsam and jetsam this is uh bordering on sort of proggy thrash clean vocals this is grinder dead and again love this artwork um one of those ones uh, as well i've been listening to online for a long time um, never found the CD, CD pretty hard to find it, and in my LP um, raging collection growth of the last two years, I managed to pick this one up, uh, the OG, on uh, No Remorse Records. Somebody imported it because it's got the modern invasion triangle. Um, yeah, this is just killer, killer stuff, as I said, sort of a bit more techy, a bit more, bit more proggy, clean vocals, very well sung clean vocals too, grinder, good stuff. This is unhinged. This is Hellwitch with, uh, I've never known how to say it, Syzygical miscre Miscreancy, whatever. Uh, manic, particularly the first song, um, uh, Nosferatu. It's only like two and a bit minutes long, but the vocals are crazy. It's got blast beats for thrash. Um, it changes like its tempo and its. Um, time signatures it's the whole damn album is crazy and this one's been completely signed by the band um, and it's over and done with so quick that's the real shame um, on Wild Raid Records back in 1990 definitely check it out if you've never heard Hellwitch they only did this and then a modern album I think that's all they did um, but amazing stuff Hellwitch this one's another one of those ones I didn't know too much about uh, and then my buddy Extra he's so much into the thrash um he told me to start hunting for it. He said, add this to your record hunts, and I did, and it showed up. Hex and House, The Edge of Eternity. Again, talking about the sort of technical thrash here, a bit proggy. Um, not super speed, but it's it's very clean sounding. It's got a bit of a you know, sort of space thing going on there, technology. Um, it's really, really good. It's such a grower, too. It took me, um, like it, 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 each listen, I've listened to it about four times now, um, and I put it straight into the favourites by the, the fourth list. And I'm like, this one is just going to get better and better each time I listen to it. Got unpacking more of the sound because it's it's not immediate. It's the progressive ones. You got to unpack a bit more. Hex and House, Edge of Eternity. Next one. This is well, one of the latest ones I picked up. Infernal Majesty. Holy shit. Uh, Nuns shall defy. Um, it took one listen to put this into my favourites. I knew it was going to be good. I had heard samples through the years, but it was one of those ones that um, a couple of years ago when I decided I wanted to get it, I decided to not listen to it online again because I remember hearing it for those samples a few years ago going, wow, that's incredible. And I didn't want to, I just wanted to go in kind of blind again, if that makes sense. And I did, I put it on there and I smiled ear to ear. This is furious. This is... Um, this is Slayer and then some. That's exactly what they were going for here. Infernal Majesty. 
Look at all the bullet belts, look at all the leather. You know what it sounds like. It sounds like epic thrash, fantastic stuff. I don't need to say anything about this, do I? Do I need to say anything about Creator? Pleasure to kill? Um, I mean, the debut is amazing, and on a good day, sometimes I put that ahead uh, for its just rawness, but this is pure thrash. This is, this is probably my favorite of the German thrash albums. I think I might put that out there and say it's my favorite. So there you go, pleasure to kill, just amazing. Malaya Rage, um, these guys, I think they're a US band, I think they are, pretty sure they are, Kill to Survive. Um, definitely going for that um, Master of Puppets just, and Justice for All kind of speed and sound. Um, a little bit more on the speed metal, um, but it is still pretty much thrash. Um, I, have, I love this, I got their second album recently. They just, it's got chuggy stomping riffs, like it's never breakneck. Fantastic stuff, absolutely fantastic. Um, underrated band too, so yeah. Look at that denim, like, tears in them, fantastic. Malaya Rage, great cover. The other side of the coin, this is merely death metal, Messiah, Hymn to a Gremlin. I listened to it again before doing the video and thought, oof, do I include this, do I not? It is still a thrash album. They, they progressed um, past this to become more of a death metal band, but here it's just super raw, heavy thrash. Like the very first Onslaught album has that rough, raw, heavy edge that's practically death metal. You get that here with Messiah, very underproduced as well. Um, yeah, great stuff. If you've not heard the early Messiah, please check them out. Heavy, 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 heavy. Mutilator, Immortal Force. This is uh, definitely one of the more um, sort of barbaric black and thrash. Not quite black and thrash, like the, the, the elements are there, a bit like Sarcophago. Um, it is still really just evil South American thrash metal. Um, they've been listening to a little bit of German bands and then they just went with it and made it South American, Mutilator, Immortal Force. Um, there's the guys there. Old uh, Cogumelo release, fantastic stuff, so good. Super, super heavy. Little triple six there, and I love the silver. These guys, um, MX, uh, Simoniac, Simio mm. it's, the, it's the Simon record, we'll go with that. Um, this is, is kind of, it's sort of like sloppy, a bit immature, um, almost falls apart kind of thrash. I have so much fun with it. Um, but you, you can't take this one seriously at all. Good, for it, but it's not, not funny ha-ha pizza thrash, not at all. It's just a bit immature, and I think that's why I love it so much. MX, ah, uh, great, great. These guys, not immature. Um, Nasty Savage, Indulgence. The kick drum sound on this, actually the drum sound on this entirely is some of the best thrash drum production I've ever heard. It's thick and it is heavy. Um, the whole thing's amazing. Look at this bloke here, Nasty Ronnie there. Check out those wraparounds. Fantastic. He could be in a uh, in a maggot stomp band with those sunnies. Just amazing. Nasty Savage is um, a recent-ish turnaround for me as well in the last couple of years. I had heard them, but not really got into them. Um, I made it a mission when I started to get vinyl that, you know, in my head, vinyl equals thrash. So that's why there's so much here on LP. You haven't done the CDs yet, we'll do them at the end. Um, and this became one of those ones that, yep, it's going on the have to get on wax. Here we are. Indulgence from Nasty Savage. I need to get more from them because they're such a great band. Nuclear Assault, Survive, come on. You know this one. Um, yeah, this... The band didn't take themselves too seriously, that's for sure, but um, particularly on Survive, the music is very serious sounding. Um, they don't look like they're being serious, and they're not really, but it's it's just it's just fast and it's ripping fun thrash, really good. Um, I need to get Game Over as well, but uh, I'm very happy to have Survive. Such a good album. I spoke of Onslaught before, here it is, The Force, their second album their best album. If you're going to get one onslaught, you just get the force. It is their best. 
Um, UK band, I'm sure from memory they're UK band. Um, and yes, there you go, some blood splatter guitar. Very, very cool. Absolutely love this one. Onslaught, The Force, so much fun. Overkill. Overkill have got 427 albums. I went and counted. Um, Feel the Fire though, this is for me what, what it's all about. I only really like early Overkill. The vocals went really weird and not my kind of weird, but here, kept in check. So you just get solid, fun, thrash. Um, people put them in the big four category. Um, I'd happily swap out Anthrax for them. Did you notice any Anthrax yet? Um, but you know, uh, I don't, I don't quite put them there. But they're still, you know, really awesome thrash. Uh, this, this album particularly, is, is. I've got a, I've got a CD of one of these. I think the second album. It's kind of all I need. But feel the fire, mandatory. That's the one you want. Paradox, Heresy. Um, this has got a little bit of the, the proggy technical going on as well. Uh, I really want to get their first album, but still, Heresy was the one I heard. 15 years ago online um, and I started hunting for the CD back then had absolutely no success in ever finding it then when I started to find I started to buy records again I found a new record shop that only just opened and I went through their metal LPs for the first time I've shown this shop in my videos before but the very first time I was there they had Paradox Heresy I nearly peed my pants I was so happy because then they opened the world of the things that I've managed to get from that shop. Such a good album, and I was really, really stoked to pick it up on uh, on Wax. Fantastic. On and who's this from? Yeah, it is Roadrunner. It's, an, it's a Roadrunner album. So there you go, Paradox. I did so much thrash. Now this one I did um and are about including because they went on definitely to be purely death metal. But here, Pestilence, uh, Malleus Maleficarum. Listening to it again, it is a thrash album. Heavy death thrash over tones, but it is still a thrash album. The riffage is thrash. The vocals, it's Martin Van Drunen, so you know he's leaning on the death metal side, but he's not, yeah, you know, he's discernible, and it's just got the aggression of thrash, I think, rather than the, um, the brutality of death metal, so that's why I include it. And it is, um, it's not my favourite Pestilence album, but it's my favourite Pestilence thrash album. And because they've only got the one, I get to get away with including it. So there you go, Pestilence. Malus Maleficarium. Another Brazilian band. This is Psychic Possessor. Um, this is, uh, yeah, this is another Cogumelo one. It's um, very, very unknown. This, as far as I know, they all only did this album. Mid-paced, sort of chunky, groovy, very heavy. Um, you could sort of say it was proto-death metal. In its heaviness and the vocals as well but it is thrash it just happens to not be you know blindingly fast there's the guys there this was signed well, the previous owner got it signed very nice got zombies and stuff in the song titles and on the pictures so very cool psychic possessor not many people know that one everybody knows this one razor evil invaders love razor always knew this one uh, and had it digitally forever um, now I've got all their good albums. That was just very, very lucky. I managed to pick them all up pretty recently in the last uh, year or so. Um, but this is the one that I first heard. I first heard um, the actual song Evil Invaders because the hypocrisy covered it. That's how I found the band. I love the quote on the back here too. We spit on those who choose to pose. We thrash with all the rest. Amazing. Just look at those guys. Motorbikes, sunnies, studs. Can of the man, absolutely love it. Razor, Evil Invaders. Um, getting a little bit more melodic and a bit more, a bit more tasteful and pro. A little bit of acoustics and things in here. This is Realm, Endless War, clean vocals again. Uh, he gets up there too. Um, yeah, tasteful. Like I said, this is a very, very tasteful album. I think it's not uh, crazy thrash. It's kind of actually a little bit like the album I'm going to show after this. Um, it's, uh, yeah, just just really good. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Awesome stuff. More Road Racer, Realm, Endless World, War. I want to get the follow-up album. Um, and yeah, I do hear similarities with Sabbath, um, A History of Time to Come. Uh, UK band, not the Japanese Sabbath, who are excellent, but not including them in, in this. They're more black metal. Um, 
yeah, it's got that, yeah, sort of um, more technical, more proggy, progressive thrash sound. Um, yeah, everybody knows this album. You can sort of tell that they're a bit more proggy because look at how they're dressed, right? They're not in denim jeans. They're in, uh, they're, they're in, uh, yes, they're in that. They kind of look like Megadeth. Though. Anyway, Sabbath's very tasteful yet again. Very cool, good stuff. History of Time to Come. This one, Sacrifice, Forward to Termination. Um, this thing was minty fresh. Thank you, Brendan Von Doom. Um, OG on Diabolic Force and Fringe. I found it shrink wrapped, which was just ridiculous. I took the shrink wrap off a 30 plus year old album, 35 years old. Anyway, um, this is such good thrash. Ah, this is one of those ones you could say, somebody asked you what does thrash sound like, you could quite happily put this one on and say, yeah, it sounds like this. A uh, little bit in the, on the technical side, but really it's just straight ahead. Good fun, fast thrash, sacrifice. This one, I just, I swear this is an underdog. Nobody talks about this. Sentinel, Sentinel Beast, Depths of Death. Um, I talked about this in a video recently. I love this one. Um, bit rough, a little bit immature in its production um, and has uh, Debbie Gunn on vocals. So yeah, female vocals that are um, not obviously so, like she just barks it out, absolutely barks it. Um, good, good stuff. Sentinel Beast, very underrated, I think. Definite favorite. Very happy when I picked that one up. Uh, Slammer, the work of idle hands. Um, I had been listening to this for so long and then kind of um, just digitally, um, then forgot they existed. I tripped over this in Utopia Records one day and went, I remember that cover. And I played it like six times after I got it. So good. Um, Slammer is another one of those bands that I think were talked about at the time and then sort of forgotten since, which is a real shame. If you've not heard Slammer, please do check them out. Uh, the work of Idle Hands. This. This. Defining. Defining stuff. Slaughter, Strapato. Um, the most brutal thrash to come out of Canada. The guitar tone is Swedish death metal. Uh, before there was Swedish death metal, this is such an influence to the whole scene over there. Um, oh god, it's just heavy. Um, the, as I said, the guitar tone really makes it heavy, but it's just just fast Canadian thrash. I love it so much. Slaughter, Strapato. Um, songs aren't very long. It's just bang, bang, bang. So good. Oh, look, here's another one I don't need to talk about. Yes, Show No Mercy is my favourite Slayer. Hell away, it's good. Rain and Blood, I've played it too much. That's where I stopped with Slayer anyway. Show No Mercy for me has the youthful exuberance. Uh, I think it's the most creative as well. Um, they're not just going for the blinding speed. Hell Awaits is a close, close second, but I do not have it on um, actually any format. Don't shoot me. I hit that point with Hell Awaits where I'm like, nah, I'm not buying a reissue. I'm gonna wait till I can get an OG because it's it's one of those ones. Like, there's 5,000 copies out there. I'm gonna wait till I find the original. But anyway, I did with Show No Mercy, I found an original. Very happy on Metal Blade. I don't need to talk anything about this album. I mean, look, it's got the Antichrist, it's got Die by the Sword, it's got Tormentor. I love that Tormentor as well. It's got Cryonics, ah, Slayer, Show No Mercy. Uh, another one with the Ed Repka art, Solstice. Um, a little bit into the Death Thrash side. It's still pretty much just Thrash though. Um, yeah, this one actually is a reissue too. This one was on, um, who was it on? Oh, it's Hammerheart. Yeah, Hammerheart put this one out. Um, yeah, um, Ed Repka, Repka cover, Thrash, it, it all goes together. Solstice, um, what's the damn thing called actually? The Sentencing, yeah, so they never put it on the front. Anyway, big fan of this one, uh, never got the CD around the time, sat on it for so long that this reissue came out. I thought I could hunt for the original, but um, no, the, this, this one, the reissue was fine for me, so here we go. Uh, sent Solstice, I'm losing my voice. Um, yeah, quality. Yeah, everyone knows this one, Testament, the new order. Personally, my favorite Testament, Legacy, on a good day, is, is there. But yeah, this one has got, where are the tracks? Um, 
Try by Fire and Into the Pit, Bang Bang, one and two, which is why this is my number one testament. Can't beat those tracks, therefore this album wins. New World Order. Vendetta. Uh, go and live, stay and die. The second album is a bit more heavy thrash, but um, I actually much prefer this debut. Um, it's sort of a speed metal thrash kind of thing. It really is still thrash, but it's just a little bit on the speed metal side. Um, great, great stuff from these guys. Really, uh, it, the debut albums I find so often just have that extra bit of energy, and I think that's why I like this one over um, the follow-up. Great cover too. Go and live, stay and die. Vendetta. Volcano Live. This um, live album came out before their actual album, and I have not managed to find the actual album yet. That's going to take some time. This one I was <laughs> very, very lucky to find. Um, this one came out on, well, here we go, it's Brazilian label, Sebo uh, de Elite, I think. I don't know. It's all in uh, Brazilian, Portuguese. Um, yeah, Volcano Live. So they did this live set in like 85, and it was pretty much some of the heaviest thrash you were ever going to get at the time. Um, bordering on black metal, um, angry, raw, big influence, I think, then to probably compatriots like Sepultura at the time. Not sure who came first. I think Volcano were probably one of the first in that scene to be this heavy. Um, absolutely love it. It is such a good album. Sure it's live, but it's a great production too. And the last on the wax, Whiplash, Power and Pain. Always love that stupid, stupid cover. Um, when I was buying CDs, um, I was always buying CDs, but Around about 2010, 2011 or so, I started to want to find classics on CD that I missed. Uh, and this was one of the first ones. And I found that uh, Price Killers release on CD, which is the only one they did at the time. And I played that thing a billion times. But then I found the LP, and this is what I play now. It's got the, um, the old Utopia Records German import sticker um, from when this came out. And Totally Evil, how cool is that? Out on uh, Road Runner. Oh, I love this one. Top, top shelf thrash, and uh, that's the end of the records. Onto the CDs now, and the first one. This is the, some of the heaviest um, uh, Brazilian thrash I had heard at the time. Atomica, uh, with disturbing the noise. Um, I found this one when they. This was the first time it was released on CD. In I think about 05, it might be here. Uh, I don't think it says, just as the original date of 1991. Uh, it was only ever on LP, and I remember at the time I was very much death metal, black metal. I wasn't listening to thrash besides the early staples. Um, but I remember seeing online some hype about this coming out, being the first time on CD. I listened to some samples and I was hooked, had to get it. Um, it's got like that sort of reminds me a bit of like Devastation's Idolatry in, in its thickness. Um, but it's way more rapid than that. Atomica, Disturbing the Noise. Check it out if you've not heard it. On Cogumelo, Technical Thrash, Coroner, No More Colour. Uh, for me, my favourite, Coroner. Um, I still actually don't have R.I.P. I know how bad am I. Um, yeah. Coroner, um, one of those bands that got more and more technical. Um, and then I think it was, it was Mental Vortex after this one. And then after that album... I think it was called Grune or something, Grime, I don't know, and that was just garbage and that was in the coroner, but um, this is, for me, the best time to listen to them. Um, it's, yeah, that um, technical sounding thrash, the vocals remind me a lot like the later era Chuck from Death, um, and it's just, yeah, just good, strong, good, my favourite, absolutely. Um, R.I.P. is more direct and raw, but um, I think I prefer Coroner when they're being a bit more creative, and that's this one, No More Colour. Oh man, Exhorter. This is Slaughter in the Vatican. The only Exhorter you need, you don't need uh, the law that came after, that was terrible. Um, 
people compare them so much to Pantera, but I, I, I mean, I sort of hear it a little bit, but I don't hear it as much as people really think. Um, it is more, you know, a chunky thrash, but it's um, it's not the groove metal that those guys were belting out of Texas, that's for sure. Um, absolutely fantastic, though. This is, this is, as I said, the one you want to get. You don't need anything after it. I heard that the new one's apparently okay, but um, honestly, eh. Slaughter in the Vatican, this is what you want, this is what you need. Um, early road racer, love it. Bit more on tech again, Forbidden with Forbidden Evil. Uh, the only Forbidden I've got, I don't have the album after this one. I don't know what I'm doing with my life. One of those gaps I need to fill, but anyway. I think everybody knows this album by now and how very, very good it is, so I won't harp on about it, but um, uh, yeah, Through the Eyes of Glass, I think was the track that uh, really hooked me on this one. I think that was the one. Um, and yeah, and the title, Forbidden Evil. Just, da. Of course you know it, Forbidden. Forbidden Evil. This one. This was one of those ones I was not looking for at all. Heathen, Victims of Deception. Uh, my mum likes metal. Which is cool, she's 75, she likes metal. Um, but she likes more hair metal, glam metal, um, you know, whatever. That's, that's her thing, it's fun. We do cross paths every now and then, and we both knew the same guy at Utopia Records at the time. Um, very cool that your mother goes to the same metal record shop as you do, but um, she was given this CD by that same guy in the shop that thought that she would like it. She did not. She gave it to me. I loved it. No idea why that guy thought um, she'd like this. It's far too heavy for my mum, but this, this was so good. Um, that Scott Burns thick sound. Uh, it's a bit like Devastation, but clean vocals, um, quite soaring, um, and I love the very, very anti-Christian themes in this album. It's very, um, the, the, the opening track, um, uh, Hypnotized, starts with like a, sounds like a speech from a, like an, a, it's like an atheist giving a speech somewhere, um, which is really interesting. I don't know where, I, I've always been curious where that came from, but anyway, um, Hypnotized, such a good track on this one, Victims of Deception. Heathen, amazing album. Australia represent Hobbs, Angel of Death. Look, there's the map on the back. Australia's answer to Slayer, uh, they weren't even trying to hide it. This is um, Hella Waits, Australian style. Fantastic. Hobbs, unfortunately passed away a couple of years ago. Um, I was meant to see him play, um, but then the show was cancelled. He was too sick, and then he passed away. It was very, very shame. Um, yeah, Hobbs, Angel of Death. This is the one you need, um, self-titled, and came out in 80, 88, 88. So it's not like we were you know, on time copying Slayer, but um, <laughs> Hobbs spent a couple of years perfecting their sound, and here we are. So good. Uh, Satis Illusions, uh, also called uh, Chemical Exposure. Um, this is actually a reissue that came out from Dis. Pleased, yeah, displeased. It still itself is kind of hard to find. Um, yeah, Sad is a good band. Um, pretty, pretty crazy thrash. I thought um, this one comes with demos as well on the back, um, which I don't really need. But anyway, this is the version I could get. Um, yeah, um, good fun thrash. Like I think the the Chemical Exposure title and the picture there, I think, is a better representation of the music. Like it's not crossover or anything like that, but it's um, it's not this crazy dark looking thing either so anyway Satis Illusions Chemical right, really awesome awesome and um, this might have been a video influenced by Arise but it is not my favourite Sepultura that goes to Schizophrenia oh, I've listened to this thing 200 times no exaggeration I think 100 of those times would have been year 12 in high school um, I smashed this through my Discman in maths class, double maths class, just listening. From the blast comes the storms. This thing is so good. Uh, to the wall, escape to the void. Inquisition Symphony, that was good. Um, Scream Behind the Shadows, Septic Schizo, The Abyss, Rest in Pain, and Troops of Doom. Uh, I'm just tired even thinking about how thrash-tastic this thing is. It is... Uh, yeah, I'm not sure when the anniversary for this was, 87, so we're well and truly past that one uh, by another four years. I think we're talking almost like 35 years anniversary for this thing. 
Just so good, absolutely amazing stuff. Has a little bit of the death metal still in the band um, that they stripped away a bit more and beneath the remains, but for me, schizophrenia is sepultura. Just as I would say, Sodom is Agent Orange. Um, I love the earlier stuff as well, um, particularly the first uh, EP, but that is more proto-black metal, so I'm, I'm, I'm intentionally leaving it and saying that Agent Orange is the thrash album you want, it's the one you need, it's the fire that doesn't burn. Agent Orange. Between this and Pleasure to Kill, I know I said Pleasure to Kill is like my favourite German thrash, but god damn it. See, now I'm holding the Sodom and I go, is this one my favourite? Half a dozen of one, six of the other, I don't know. Agent Orange, Sodom, just essential. And the last thing that I'm including in my absolute favourites thrash of the vintage period, Zentrix. Uh, this one is um, for whose advantage and uh, Mark G with a C, I'm sure you'll be very happy to see this one here. The only Zentrix I've got, I don't have the debut. Um, I would need to buy uh, another mortgage on my house to be able to get that. Would love to get this on wax, but I don't know, was there limited runs of these things? Like, compared to other road racers, this is challenging to find wax on wax. But anyway, Zentrix, um, we're doing the Metallica style thrash, definitely. Um, I don't think they were trying to be anything different, and that's fine. It really, really just, it worked so hard for me. I, I yeah, for whose advantage? Absolutely love this album, Zentrix, and my final album. And they're my favourite thrash metal albums from the 80s and 90s. I'm sure I've missed some. I'm sure I've missed some of your favourites. Did you see any Anthrax? No, I'm not even a big fan of the band. Did you see any Megadeth? That's a tough one for me. I love Megadeth. But there's not one album that I can say is a classic. And I know that's sacrilege to some people, but I think there's a lot of issues with their earlier albums that don't make them complete bangers all the way through. They're the kind of band that I want to just have a... I actually just want to have a compilation of all their early material. I know there's a lot of people yelling at me right now, but that's the thing is that that, that is just what I am like with Megadeth. Um, and I'm sure there's other stuff that I've missed too. But anyway, we were here to celebrate this album, Arise, 30 year anniversary yesterday. And I think we've celebrated it by talking about some of my favorite thrash. In the comments below, please tell me your favorite thrash albums. Give me your top five, the ones that just make you think thrash metal and anything that you think that I missed that I should have talked about let me know because I'm still finding 80s bands that I didn't know exist so please help me out um, and uh, I don't usually say this but I'm going to say it this time hit the like button press the big fat subscribe yes I'm one of those youtubers now anyway there's those things go press those or are they over there I think they're over there go press those to see some of my other stuff hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching